parking spot. A mother, granddaughter, <coughs> grandmother, I'm sorry, sister and friend. We ask that you bring comfort, love, and directions to the family. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job. I have nothing written. There's a few people that want to speak one-liners or whatever about my mother. You've all had, obviously, contact with her and have your own special little stories. I can name one from almost every single person here. Um, a great thing Mom did was leave all of us kids letters that we got to read over the weekend. Very cool in her writing. Just fun, silly little letters, not serious, like um, getting us to graduation, some of her high points in her life, and it was all revolved around us kids and her family and friends. She was so proud of the fact that her and my dad together raised all of us kids. She said in her last words, don't be sad for me. I had a great time here, but I'm going to a greater place and living eternally with your dad. So that was very helpful little letter we got. Um, her last words at 2.48 Saturday morning were, I love you. Had a little smile on her face. She knew she was going home. She's known for a year and a half after her stroke that she was going home. She always knew when we were there. Didn't always like it when we were there because I, for one, would shake her awake. You sleep on your own time. Shake, shake, shake. Sometimes it works, sometimes you get that look. <laughs> um, motorcycling. Debbie gave us this Harley blanket to place here. She was a big motorcycler. Loved all of her events, except for when her and Grace went over the bridge and they made her go in the grates like this because her motorcycle was just teeny weeny <laughs> didn't like that so well snowmobiling loved it her and my dad started the double rider snowmobile club when i was nine so kelly 10 we're all one two three four four in diapers at the same time can't imagine we wrote snowmobiling they bought one year all of us kids snowmobiles for christmas all used all none of nothing matched nothing mattered we were all going to the double riders we were in this big open field, went up a hill. The only tree on that whole property my mom hit <laughs> and knocked out her teeth. It's like the only tree, just crazy little stuff. That it's fun to remember all those little things. She loved reunions. She was a legend in this county and abroad for her, what is it? Anybody know? What is it? Fudge. Fudge. Ain't it butter fudge? It was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Melt in your mouth fudge. She was proud that she got um, associate of the month at the facility. This is her picture on that day. You can see the happiness on her face. Then she gave this picture to Ellen to keep forever. And Nancy, she was saying earlier, Mom loved to get fixed up. They were at a makeup party. Mrs. Phyllis Slocum, where are you, Nancy? Maybe you want to say that. You want to share that story? Well, I was having an extension meeting at our home, and um, the um, meeting was when Phyllis Slocum came in her long fur coat, and she was um, had um, Broadway, and um, so she's got her suitcase with her, and it's full of makeup. And she's going to show us country girls what we should look like. <laughs> and, and she made up uh, Sherry. <laughs> and we just laughed and laughed and laughed. And Maybe she should wake up everybody when she went home to show them what she looked like because <laughs> they wouldn't know her. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Was, but she did enjoy. And she was a joy. And when you went to see her, she, um, as years went by, uh, it was. Uh, she smiled, so you knew she knew you, and she'd say, Nancy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was a good feeling to share some time with her. Hmm. Lots of years you spent, all the neighborhood. Yeah. She did love company. Carrie and I was just talking last week that she would say, I have at least 20 people a day. Well, there's nothing on her calendar, like who are all these people? Well, nurses and staff, <laughs> But they weren't her nurses. They were just the staff that would come and greet her for five minutes at least every day. At least 20 of them every single day. Love company. 
loved it. But a couple weeks ago, I was up, couldn't leave because she was so fluent in her speaking. I could understand every word like I'm talking here. Could not believe it. Couldn't leave, almost called in. It's like, okay, I have an hour to get ready before I have to be to work. <laughs> but does anybody else, Lori, you have something to share? Lori took and, and cleaned her house and did lots of stuff with mom before she moved to the facility five years ago. Last year was very rough on her, just as rough on Lori. She didn't just raise us kids. She, she raised a lot of kids out there. Bethany's friends, Carrie's friends. Does anybody have anything they'd like to share? Mom did not like funerals. It was the worst thing in her life. Didn't like them, didn't go to many. So this is how we got around. So we didn't um, make her mad. <laughs> so we just did this. But the funny thing too, whenever we left mother's house, didn't matter what house she was living, even the facility, she'd go to the window and I'd have to pull up and she'd wave. So at the end, when we depart, everybody wave for mom. Rick's gonna take a picture when this happens. Uh, Rick's got a website built up in her memory. He does, um, what is it called? Find, find a grave, memorials. Yep, um, but the bigger word. Genealogy? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. yes. Um, let me see. So many stories and I'm forgetting them all because of course I didn't write anything down, but the, Jimmy is going to place mother in and put some dirt. I have one little story can, maybe. Oh, yes, please, Rick. <laughs> okay, uh, my grandmother Dorothy was a Schaefer, so Eugene was her brother, and so that makes Sharon my mother's cousin, mm -hmm. or my second cousin, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't know her real well, but what I remember most is time at Oceana, um, the Oceana Center there. And uh, that was uh, going in to see my mother after when she was staying there for three weeks. And every time I'd come in there, I would see Sharon just bipping up and down the halls, going from room to room, visiting everybody. You know, and as you walked down the hall, you'd hear a Tiger's ball game on in the air. And as you walked by, you'd know which room it was. It was Sharon's room. She always knew what the score was. She knew what was going on with the Tigers for sure. And I just, I just see her so happy all the time. You know, she seemed like she cared about everybody else than herself. Thank you, Rick. Um, Rick did so love my mom. He's very family. And like he said, his mom and my mom are first cousins and she needs prayers. She's in the hospital currently. So that, that takes a toll on us when our mamas are not easy access. Um, oh, afterwards, Carrie wanted me to mention, we are going to her last real home in Hart at 526 East Johnson. Bethany purchased that from her grandma 12 years ago. So we'll be having a cookout out in the back of the house there. 526 East Johnson. Mm -hmm. The next road from Dave's Party Store. Alan, Patty, anybody have anything they want to share? What else did she hate? Horses and losing at the casino. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm Karina and I am Sharon's great niece and I work at the facility and I remember her like doing everything. She worked the two-bit store, she loved her rum and coke, diet coke. Um, you knew when the sports was on because we'd have to shut her door when the Lions would play because she'd be screaming at the TV so loud they thought she was on the floor a few times. Um, we went yard sailing one day. Um, she was just really friendly with everybody. She did everything, went to bingo, went and visited the new people. Like, she just made everybody feel really welcome. So, she was a great lady, and I'm going to miss her. She was very, you were her girl. Her girl. Every day she'd stop in and see her. But speaking of the rum and diet coke, I used to go into the facility and I'd have a couple little shot glasses, and we'd do shots every time we went. And a couple of my cousins came in. And they're toting rum and coke, and I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, well, we've seen it on Facebook. You do shots with your mom all the time. It's with water. We were sitting next to the drinking fountain, but we always did shots. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. <laughs> Don't show her. She might just ask for one. Give her a straw. <laughs> oh, shoot. Mark? Oh, okay. <laughs> 
group this week, someone said, did your mom have a lot of friends? I said, no, she didn't. She didn't have friends. She had people that loved her, and she loved people. There's a difference between loving and having friends. People can have friends, but my mom didn't. She proved that when we was all growing up. She made sure us poor kids graduated from high school. She made sure, like my friend Tim, if he needed a place to stay, he'd come to my house to stay all night. <laughs> she loved everybody. And yes, she went through some hard times. And yes, she had some good times, but the good times overrated everything. Amen. I mean, when I had scholarships to go to college, my mom said, go, take them. And I'm like, Mom, I'm not that smart. I'm not that educated. I'm just a speech teacher. She's like, well, you do something you want to do then. Join the Army. It's actually my mom is the one that encouraged me to join the Army. And I did. And to her, I really thank that. I thank her a lot. I thanked her then for giving me advice because I was the baby of the family. And yes, she was going through some hard times before I graduated. Yes, she separated from my dad for a year. We lived in town, but uh, we got through it. She made sure I graduated. And yes, a couple of my other family members made sure they graduated, huh, Carrie? And, uh, <laughs> but that was a very big accomplishment in her life. And she had a lot of them. And you all know she had a lot of good times. But that was one of her main goals. And she told me that once I got my diploma, she's like, thank God, you all four made it. So um, when I think back, she was very well loved by a lot of people, as you can tell, people here, people that didn't even know her at work would tell me, Shadow, I know your mom's got love for you and for the people. So um, for everybody that came out, and everybody that knows her and family and friends, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mark. When she would go to sporting events, she never missed the kids' of sporting events. She'd race from one to another, but I remember there was a Hart Shelby wrestling meet in Hart. It was parents' night. She said, you need to stay in the bleachers. Do not get back on that mat. You just stay right here. So Mark did something really good, and I jumped up and screamed. And when I came down, yes, it knocked her in her noodle. <laughs> and it knocked her out. Oh, and I'm like, oh, gosh. Do I help her? Do I run? She's going to ground me. So after we got her in her chair back in the bleachers, she's like, what just hit me in my head? I'm like, that lady behind you? She ran away. She like didn't even help you. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we kind of had a wrestling match in the bleachers too. And speaking of mom and homework, there was a little debate with one of my brothers, not mentioning any names, Starts with K. Um, she's like, you, yeah. She's like, oh, you think you're so smart. You're not smarter than me. I'm sitting here helping you kids with all your homework every single day. She, she finally decided we weren't going to graduate if she continued to fill in the spaces. So she made us and taught us. But she's like, if you think you're so smart, what's two plus two? And he looked at her, squinted his eyes, and said, five. <laughs> and our whole family was in a roar. I've never seen her laugh more before or after that day. So hard she did wet her britches. <laughs> it was awesome. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share for maybe where you stand? Yeah, I remember when I was little, I quite a few times and we would, my husband and I would always run into her and she would always say yeah I'm only spending a little bit of money I'm sitting down right now because I'm losing so she always had an allowance she gave herself so I always love seeing her at the casino so. yeah thank you we can share more over at Bethany's um, anybody else have anything I don't want to cut you off if you have something I know when yeah. she was very grateful for Carrie working Sharon at the facility amen. there. So she would say, I wave to Carrie every day. <laughs> My mom retired yep. from the facility and Carrie acquired her job and has been there now like 17 years. So my mom had a good retirement. <laughs> she was her godsend, that's for sure. Ample amounts of chocolate milk, pudding, and applesauce. <laughs> Anybody else like to share? She got so she really liked to have her hair done. She used to say she wore a hard hat, and all those years she couldn't have her hair look nice. So she got so that 
and she always wanted to be the first one to come in, so we come in very early, quarter to six, and she would quite often be waiting, but if someone got in front of her, that was not a happy time. So, and we just tried to remember, yeah, we tried to manage that she could go, and then she'd say, oh, I don't care, I can wait. And I thought, mm, no, you don't really want to wait. We'll get it done. And, and then I remember saying, well, you know, your hair's not staying in. You're a little wild when you sleep. So I said, well, let's do a perm. And she said, well, you know, Carrie says I can't have a perm because it just won't take. And I said, well, let's just see about that. We'll see if we can get one that takes. And got, we got it so that it took. And she, until she got sick this last time, she had her hair done at least once a week, sometimes two or three times a week, depending on when she could get in. Um, she was one of my favorites for sure. Yeah, she'd be sitting waiting and she would greet everybody that came in. She would say good morning to them. I remember that. <laughs> I'd go take pictures and I posted on Facebook and three seconds later, she's got a piece of hair sticking up. Get that off Facebook. Bethany would have a cow. <laughs> okay, delete. <laughs> Jeannie? Good mother. She was my second one. Long time. We have a lot of brothers and sisters. It didn't just stop. All her nieces went to Vegas with. Um, yeah, I was jealous. I didn't get asked. But they had a blast. <laughs> well, Nina, I guess I should share that um, I think that I might, might have been uh, special to your mom in some way. Um, because she did give me the peanut butter recipe <laughs> written in her handwriting. I still have it. I guard it. Um, so I do have that hidden. And um, she, used to, she used to drive me a lot. She would take me places. And um, one of the places she would take me school shopping in Muskegon. And it was always just, she'd give me all the time I needed and let me look. And so she was just, you know, wonderful like that. Yes, she was. Going to grandma and grandpa's on weekends and grandma and grandpa would say, none of our parents could scold us, tell us what to do. They were in total control. <laughs> parents would sometimes get mad and go home, but us kids still got to stay. Fun stuff. Grandma Dean was definitely her best friend. Doesn't know what she did without her the first 17 years. That's why my mom didn't graduate. She met my dad, seen him at the skating rink on his Harley. She said, you won't understand it, but let me put it to you this way. We watched Fonzie all the time. He was my Fonzie and he was gonna be mine. <laughs> so soon after, start having little people. So. Little people. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody that would like to come up? You can come right on around if you'd like. Love you, Mama. Mama's little sister. See you later, big sister. That's what I'm saying. I know you do, Margie. <laughs> okay, we can complete. 
We have concluded, I believe. Anyone and everyone is welcome to come down to Bethany's behind Dave's Party Store, East Johnson, 526. Jimmy? Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody that came to support us. Teresa. Wave. We gotta wave. Yes. Everybody wave to my mom. Yes. Yes. Until we were clean out of sight, she would wave. <laughs> they did not want to leave. Anybody that would like a glad is more than welcome to take one. I was just going to remind you to say something. <laughs> They're too heavy to carry. It's okay, we will take them to Bethany's. It'll be wonderful. You can, can hand them out there. That way as well. Right. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Are you guys going to Bethany's? Are you going to Bethany's?